Hello viewers, welcome to this session. Arindam Chaudhary has very rightly remarked, you can never succeed with people without mutual trust and understanding. Effective communication skills could just be the difference between success and you. People who are effective communicator lead very smooth life, enjoy cordial relations and they are successful in life. In teaching learning situation, communication assumes great importance. Higher the effectiveness of communication, greater are the chances that instructional objectives will be achieved. Each day we spend 80 percent of our waking time on communication. Even when we are sleeping, we communicate to the outside world through our facial expression, through gestures, through postures. And in real life, whether we intend or do not intend, we communicate to the outside world. There are four basic skills in communication that is listening, speaking, reading and writing. A cross-sectional study found that we spend almost 45 percent of our waking time on listening, 30 percent time on speaking, 16 percent on reading and 9 percent of the waking time is spent on writing. It is a myth that speaking consumes most of our time. But when we try to look at these four skills, we do not get formal training in listening. However, speaking, reading and writing, they get improved by the feedback provided to us by our parents, by colleagues, by teachers and others. We are in this presentation going to focus on the concept of communication and you will be at the end of the presentation will be able to explain the concept of communication, the process of classroom communication and explain the principles of effective speaking and explain the principles of effective listening. Let us now first of all understand the concept of communication. Normally communication is understood as transmission of message from sender to receiver. But let me pose one question to you, who is a boss? There could be many answers to this question. Person can say he is authoritarian, he is a person who is very strict, he is a person who is very, very uh, always right or who is very authoritarian kind of a person. But the real meaning of the word boss is a person who is your immediate superior. That means when you interpret the words, there are two meanings attached to the word, one which is a standard dictionary meaning, another is the meaning which is based upon your experience. In other words, when we say the standard or the dictionary meaning, it is referred to as the denotative meaning and the meaning you attach to the word based upon your experience that is referred to as connotative meaning. So, communication in nutshell can be defined as sharing of meanings and if the receiver interprets both the denotative and the connotative meaning of the word as intended by the sender of the message, then communication ought to be effective. When we try to apply the communication in classroom communication situation, it passes through five stages. The very first stage is formulation of message, second is encoding of message, third is transmission of message, the fourth stage is decoding of message and the fifth one is the feedback. Now, let us see what happens in classroom situation. The teacher is the primary sender of the message. He tries to formulate the message. Syllabus for a subject forms the basis for determining the breadth and scope of the topic. Teacher tries to collect material from various sources. He tries to organize the material and then 
the teacher wants to transmit that message to the receiver. So, he is involved in selecting symbols for transferring the message to the receiver. And this process of selecting symbols is referred to as encoding of message. For transference of message, the teacher also selects channels of communication. Normally, in a classroom situation, multiplicity of channels are selected to cater to the individual differences among students. The receiver is the student and he tries to interpret the symbols and derive meaning out of those symbols. This is referred to as decoding of the message. And the student sends feedback in the form of responses to the teacher and the subsequent messages are designed by the teacher based upon the feedback received from the student. But in real classroom, the receiver, the students also become the sender of the message. And as a sender of the message, the student is involved in the formulation of message, encoding of message, transmission of message and the teacher decodes the message and sends feedback back to the student. This happens when a student poses a question, seeks clarification or he tries to supplement the information given by the teacher. So, this particular classroom communication model is known as interactive model of classroom communication. Now, when we as teacher interact with students, primarily two communication skills are involved. One is speaking, another is listening. And when we say oral communication, people speak with the vocal organs, but communicate with the whole body. When you speak in the classroom, it is not only the words which you use, which get interpreted, but your facial expression, your gestures, your postures, they also are interpreted by the listeners to derive the meaning out of the total communication. In other words, the whole personality of the speaker comes into play when he is speaking. When it comes to the effectiveness of oral communication, the verbal content means the words which are used by the teacher, they have an impact up to 7 percent. Tone of the voice that is the tonal quality, what is being said and how it is being said has an impact of 38 percent. And nonverbal behavior of the teacher has an impact on the effectiveness of oral communication to the extent of 55 percent. In other words, we can say that nonverbal behavior is what is actually determining the effectiveness of communication. Verbal content is only the tip of the iceberg, the remaining iceberg is the tonal quality and the nonverbal behavior of the speaker. Before I explain the principles of effective speaking, I request all of you to take the communication style inventory and fill it as per the directions given on the inventory. Hope you have filled in the communication style inventory. Now, score it as per the scoring sheet attached at the end of the inventory. I am sure you have now calculated your scores and you have found out whether you are high on G, high on D, high on O or high on I and what are the combinations which you get. Let me give you interpretation of the inventory. If you are high on G and D, your style of communication is that of a controller. The controller is a person who is result oriented. He would like to be at a place where the action is going on. He is very decisive, he takes decisions and he is a very private person. He does not like to share his, his information with others. If you are high on O, 
and high on D, your style of communication has that of a promoter or a socializer. Who is a promoter or a socializer? He is a person who would love to be in the company of others, who is very talkative and full of ideas and he is a person who values joy, who values entertainment. If you are high on O, high on I, your style of communication is that of a supporter or relator. Now, when I say supporter or relator, it means you are a person who is relationship oriented. You are a very good listener and you do not voice your contrary opinions to other. If you are high on G, high on I, you are an analyzer or a thinker. That means, you collect lot of information and data before taking any decisions. You are a meticulous planner and you are very logical and thoughtful as far as your communication is concerned. So, there are basically four styles of communication that is style of controller, promoter or socializer, supporter or relator or analyzer and thinker. What you need to remember is no style is right or wrong. According to the situation where you are communicating, you have to adopt an appropriate communication style. And if you adopt appropriate communication style, your communication ought to be effective. Now, let us come to the principles of effective speaking. The very first principle of effective communication is know thy subject. The teacher who has the mastery over the subject matter is able to communicate fluently. There is a flow, there is a continuity in the communication and the person is able to elaborate upon the content as per the requirements of the students. Secondly, if you know what your students should be able to do at the end of instruction, then you are able to select appropriate content, appropriate example, you are able to relate what you are teaching to the day to day life or the world of work and you are able to communicate effectively to your student. So, it is imperative for a teacher to have the mastery over the subject matter and also know the instructional objectives which the teacher wants to achieve. Third principle is know thy audience. When I say audience, for a teacher the audience is the students and it is important that a teacher takes into account the age, the interest the learning styles of the students and the previous attainments or what a student knows or the prerequisite knowledge which he should bring to the class to what extent he possesses that previous knowledge and the context to which the student belongs. This knowledge helps the teacher in pitching the lesson to the level of the learners. So, communication when pitched to the requirements of the audience ought to be effective. The message design part is equally important. When I say the message, the very first principle is organize the message. The organization of the message depends upon the nature of the content matter. You can select topical sequencing of the content that means, you can arrange the message or organize the message into headings and subheadings and elaborate on the constituent parts of the topic or you can use the chronological sequencing. If you are dealing with historical development, then chronological sequencing can be adopted. Otherwise, if the nature of the content is such that you can use journalistic 
sequencing, then you can answer questions like what happened, where it happened, when it happened, why it happened, what were the consequences of the happening and so on. This is what is referred to as journalistic sequencing of the content matter, which is primarily used in newspaper items. You can also take into account that when you are organizing the content matter, it ought to be simple and short. The brevity is the key word. You need not go on elaborating unless and until it is required or expected of you by your students. So, keep the message simple and short. Whenever you are organizing the message, use simple language. You are there in the class to facilitate learning on the part of the learners rather than impressing them with your communication skills by using very hi-fi or difficult words. In addition, make sure that whatever you speak is grammatically correct and it is also technically correct because you as teacher are dealing with engineering and technology subjects and it is very much expected of you that whatever the terms or the terminology you use in the class that is technically correct as per the discipline. It is very important for the teacher to operate from I am ok, you are ok life position. Give due respect to the individuality of each student. If you respect the individuality of student, then you are going to listen to the viewpoint of student, you are going to accept the feedback provided by the student to you and you are going to change your opinion if need be. If you operate from any other life positions that is I am ok, you are not ok, I am not ok, you are not ok or I am not ok, you are ok, then communication is going to be ineffective. So, follow the principle that always try to operate from I am ok, you are ok life position. Be audible. If the students are able to receive audio signals, only then they will be able to interpret. Otherwise, there will be no learning that will take place among the learners. So, make sure that you are audible to the students. If there are 10, you should be audible to the 10 students. If there are 20, you should be audible to 20 students. And if there are 80 students in the class, you should remain audible to 80 students. If your voice quality does not reach all the 80 students, use the public address system to remain audible to the audience. Check your articulation and pronunciation. We are all Indians. When we use English, there is always an effect of our mother tongue on English. And it is important that your pronunciation should be correct. And that is related to articulation. If there is correct articulation of the word, that means opening up of the jaws, placement of the tongue, you inhale or you exhale, then the pronunciation would be correct. And many of the simple words like generally, secretariat, restaurant, flower, ear, they are spoken wrongly by most of us. So, I think there is need to check the articulation and pronunciation. So, what is needed is one needs to practice a lot speaking English and when you speak record your voice and try to identify the strengths and weaknesses in your articulation and pronunciation and try deliberately to improve upon the words which are wrongly pronounced by you. 
and be open to the feedback which you receive from your students, from your colleagues or from others in the society to improve upon your articulation and pronunciation. Check your rate of delivery. A human ear can discern 200 words per minute, but when you are in the class, your rate of delivery should be between 90 to 110 words per minute. If the subject matter is complex, difficult, then the rate of delivery should be slower and if the content matter is simple, easy, the rate of delivery can be faster. So, you cannot speak or you, your rate of delivery cannot be like a waiter in the restaurant who is reading a menu card or your rate of delivery cannot be like a conductor who is traveling in a bus and your rate of delivery has to be such that students are able to understand what is being said because it is there are definite instructional objectives which are to be achieved. If you speak at the same pitch for one hour, one and a half hour, you are going to be very boring and monotonous. What is needed is variation in the pitch. When you start a sentence, the pitch is low. When you are in the middle of the sentence, the pitch is the highest and when you are closing a sentence, the pitch drops down. So, maintain that rhythm from low to the high and then again low to create a variety and maintain and sustain the interest of the audience in the presentation. You can normally communicate by using different modes. You can use whispering, you can be soft, you can use conversational mode, you can be loud or you can use yelling. But when we talk in terms of classroom communication, never ever enter into whispering and yelling. You are unnecessarily creating problems for your audience. Always try to remain between the three modes that is being soft to being loud. Most of the time you should use conversational mode. At times when the student is in problem, the student has a difficulty, you can be soft. When the student is at a distance or you are talk, talking to a large audience, then you can be loud. So, try to remain between being soft to being loud. Use appropriate pauses when you are communicating to the audience. I am going to read two sentences. The teacher said the student is an idiot. The teacher said the student is an idiot. Now, these two sentences when I speak, their meaning is totally opposite to each other. So, it is a matter of where you put a pause that changes the meaning of the whole sentence. So, whenever you are speaking to the classroom, then you use appropriate pauses in your speech. It is very important that you avoid verbal virus or filler words. Many of us are in the habit of using certain words very frequently in our speech. Maybe people are using ok, you see, actually, you know and hums are there. Now, these create distractions to the audience. So, if you are able to identify the words which you frequently use in your speech, which have no potential meaning in the message, then you must try to eliminate those words from your repertoire and try deliberately 
to minimize the use and eliminate those filler words from your speech, your communication would become very effective. There are your nonverbal behavior which affect the communication. Face is the index of your mind. We communicate or express our emotions with the help of our facial expression. So, pay attention to your facial expression in the class. Maintain a very calm and relaxed facial expression and there should be a pleasant smile on your face when you are interacting with the students. But at times when you are angry with your students, that anger must be reflected on your facial expression, so that students get the signal that you are angry with them. Right? So, always try to maintain a pleasant look at your face. Gestures lend support to what you say. Now, for example, if you are saying small, the gestures are like this in the class. If you say big, the hand flows like this. So, use appropriate gestures to lend support to your verbal communication. The more the congruence between the verbal content and nonverbal behavior, the higher is the effectiveness of communication. So, do not try to adopt gestures, use normal gestures which you use in your day to day life in lending or making your communication more effective. Posture also plays important role in communication. Posture can depict dynamism or laziness and if you stand straight, erect or you adopt erect posture then you are a symbol of dynamism. If you stand like a poor posture shown in the figure, then you are trying to give a lazy look to your students. So, try to pay attention to your posture and remain erect as far as possible. The dress also conveys many things to your students. And it is rightly said that dress according to the situation. Classroom situation is a formal situation. So, it is always desired that you dress formally. When you are communicating in the classroom, be friendly to your students. Try to build a rapport between you and your students. Then there will be open communication, there will be open questioning by the students, they will be able to seek clarification to the doubts and you will enjoy the two way communication in the classroom. Another thing very important is that if you have any prejudices and biases, they should be left outside the classroom. You need to treat your students on equal footing. And if you have biases and prejudices, then your behavior with that particular group or maybe a particular student would not be very, very desirable. You will not listen to that person, you will not accept the viewpoint of that individual and you will not be open to the feedback provided by that particular individual or a group. So, free yourself from prejudices and biases. It is important that you give time to your students to grasp the message, to understand the message and for that you must also assure that they have rightly understood the message. So, pose questions, give tasks, give assignments and obtain the feedback from your students with respect to the message which you have delivered to them and you will assure yourself of the understanding of your students. And it is also important that you not only obtain feedback, 
but also provide feedback to your students by telling them what is right and what is wrong and if there is something wrong which they have understood then how to correct it. So, corrective feedback must flow from the teacher to the students to make the communication more effective. Now, we shift our focus from principles of effective speaking to principles of effective listening. Nature has given us two ears, two eyes, but one tongue to the end that we should hear and see more than we speak. Listening is a neglected art. We have not been trained in listening as I said in the beginning and listening is what makes a difference in communication. If you have the higher quality of listening, then you will not be distracted by the hindrances that are happening in the environment. So, it is very, very important that we as teacher must improve upon our listening skills. When I say listening, there is a clear cut distinction between listening and hearing. Hearing is simply receiving the audio signals and listening is uh, hearing with understandings. That means, there is deliberate attempt on the part of the listener to derive meaning out of the audio signals, evaluate those signals and then try to interpret those signals. So, listening in nutshell can be defined as hearing with understanding. Hearing and listening, if you are able to dis differentiate, then listening serves some very important purposes in communication. The very first purpose is when you listen to someone, you show respect, you show concern for the other individual. You are giving a signal to the person who is speaking that you can continue. Another thing which is important is that when you listen, then speaker gets a signal that you are able to understand and you are with him and so he continues. Listening also helps in building relation and lastly, it leads to learning. So, these are five important purposes served by listening. Now, take the listening self assessment test. There are 10 statements and you have to fill in whether this behavior you usually take up or you sometime take up or you take up rarely or seldom. Hope you have filled in the self assessment test. Now, let me give you the principles of effective listening. The very first principle of effective listening is that when you are speaking, then also it is needed that you maintain eye contact with your audience and it is equally important that when you are listening, you are you maintain eye contact with the speaker. That means, when you maintain eye contact with the speaker, you give a signal that you are interested in listening to what is being said, it motivates the speaker. Second principle is that pay attention to what is being said. It is a deliberate attempt on the part of the listener to pay attention to what is being said and if you pay attention, then you are able to concentrate on what is being said. So, it is a deliberate attempt on the part of the listener. Fourth principle is listen without biases and prejudices. If you start listening to a conversation or a communication with a note that the subject is going to be uninteresting, the speaker is boring, then you will not be able to listen effectively. You will switch off from that communication. So, always try to listen without biases and prejudices 
and don't color the perception by your biases and prejudices. The meaning of the total communication change if you go and listen with biases and prejudices. When you are listening, you need to pay attention to both what is being said and what are the emotions behind the content. If you understand what is being said and what are the feelings behind that message correctly, then you are able to understand the message. Let me give you one example here. When the boys are in 11th or 12th, they normally come late in the evening and their mother or father is standing outside the gate. And when this child arrives at home, then he is being questioned for being late. Many a times there is retaliation by the children. But if these children understand why it is being said to them, why they are being questioned, that means they understand the feeling of concern of their parent, then that retaliation will not be there. So, it is very important when you listen to somebody, then both what is being said and the feelings behind that content, they are understood for effective listening. Listen for the big picture and not for specifics. Many a times, we try to retain and listen to the easy, the simple message which is being sent to us. And we try to filter the message and leave the difficult aspects of the message. But when we try to filter the message, the real meaning of the message is lost. So, what is needed is listen to the totality of the message. Only then the message will be well understood. It is rightly said, only the wearer knows where the shoe pinches. Put yourself in the place of the speaker, then you will understand the viewpoint of the speaker in the right manner. So, this is what is said to be that you indulge in empathetic listening rather than simple listening. Make use of differential in thought speed and the speech speed. You can think much faster than you speak. And it is said thought speed is 4 to 5 times more than the speech speed. So, when the speaker is speaking, your thought processes are going at a very fast pace. So, the differential that exists, the gap that exists between the thought speed and the speech speed that need to be utilized productively by the listener. And at that particular point of time, you need to relate the new incoming information with what you already know. That means, you try to build association, the relationship between the new information and what you already know. And you also try to analyze and evaluate the logic and consistency of the message being given to you or sent by to you by the speaker. So, if you indulge in relating the new information to what you already know and you try to evaluate the logic and consistency, the listening will be effective and the learning will be more. So, as a listener, make productive use of the differential between the thought speed and the speech speed. In addition, there are certain don'ts. Do not prejudge the communication. Now, if you happen to be in a communication situation, where you try to have the prejudgment of the subject, prejudgment of the speaker, and you call the subject uninteresting, the speaker as boring, then you switch off from the communication and you do not listen to what is being said. So, never prejudge the communication. It is also important that you only pay attention 
to the content and not to the delivery or the language of the speaker. If you are more prone to evaluating the speaker's delivery and the language, then you will be losing the meaning of the message and you will be more into criticizing or evaluating unnecessarily the delivery or the language used by the speaker. It is rightly said that if you want to take notes when you are listening to somebody, then you should try to take notes in your own words. It is easy for the listener to interpret the notes taken in his own words later on. And therefore, it is said do not take copious note, do not try to note everything in verbatim as is spoken by the speaker. Do not interrupt the speaker when he is trying to convey the message. The more are the interruptions, the greater will be the discontinuity in the communication. So, let the speaker finish the ideas, finish the sentence, finish the message and then you can pose a question, you can supplement the information or you can clarify any doubt which you have in mind. Do not tolerate distractions. When person sitting next to you is talking to another individual in the class or in the gathering, try to stop that distraction. Or if you are sitting at the back and you are unable to listen or receive the audio signal, that distraction you must avoid by coming in the front row. Or if you feel that people are indulging in such behavior which is distracting you and you are not able to concentrate on what is being said, then try to tell them directly to stop that behavior. So, if you adopt some of these principles, you will be able to listen effectively. Now, you have taken a self assessment test on listening. Let me give you the scoring of the self assessment test. If your score is below 22, you need to improve your listening behavior on majority of the items including included in the test. If your score is between 22 and 26, you need to change your listening behavior on some of the items included in the test. And if your score is more than 27, then you need to improve upon a few items included in the test. So, I would at the end say in case you want to improve upon your communication skills, the best you can do is practice, practice, practice and try to record your speech, analyze the strengths and weaknesses in your speech and then try to deliberately improve upon the weaknesses which you identify in your recorded speech. So, good luck. Thank you very much.